Hilton, or in English, civilization. And no, those two words don't actually mean the same. I'm not entirely sure why the international title isn't The Revenge or The Vengeance, which would be the direct literal translation of the Danish word, but whatever. After his mother dies, Christian, a preteen boy, moves with his father back to the father's mother and switches to a new school. He quickly befriends Elias, a popular target for bullies. Christian attempts to defend him, and so begins the first of the conflicts in the movie relating to the subject of revenge, of increasing violence. Elias's father works as a doctor in Africa, in an area threatened by a sadistic crime lord. In addition to the theme of revenge, this also deals with loss, power struggles, and fear, and it does so rather well. This is only the second movie by Suzanne Beer I watch. I know, I'm in the minority of Danes on that. And this does back up my perception that Things We Lost in the Fire, a title I maintain must refer to the credibility and the character development in the script, was simply a fluke and not at all representative of Beer's level of talent. It should be noted that the real problem with that movie was the script, and that had nothing to do with Beer. This one she helped write, along with the man who wrote Dint du Fruchter or Fear Me Not in English, Mörke or Merck, or Ant Blinkende Lüchte or Flickering Headlights, probably his most popular of the three, spawning several similar Danish black comedies. The scriptwriter's name is Anas Thomas Jensen, and he brings his skill and his credible, very human characters to this. And the very clear focus on these characters. Beer directs it quite well. With such an evocative subject, it could very easily sink into mere soap opera, but she helps to maintain this level of reality. You get this sense that this could happen, maybe it has, maybe it will. Beer, I'm very happy to say, abandons her irritating habit of the eyeball close-up. Uh, Beer, can you get that camera out of my face? Because I'm afraid I might swallow it. And there was much rejoicing. She does keep up the handheld cinematography. I'd say this really reminded me a lot of NCIS in the way it's shot. The editing really puts you in the situation. And we're not talking Paul Greengrass, where the camera moves so much and so constantly that you probably will wind up with a headache before the movie's over. And it also mostly does not attract attention to itself. These very well-written, well-developed characters are brought perfectly to life by an immense measure of acting talent. I don't think I've really seen the two lead boys, those who played Christian and Elias, in anything else, but I would really like to. They're asked to do quite a lot, they really accomplish it. You're never really unsure what they're supposed to be conveying, and not only does Christian really nail something that is quite hard to do if you're not really diving into it if you don't have the talent, the acting chops, which is a young boy who's lost a parent. Not only does he nail that, but they really did find someone who looks like he could be Ulrich Thompson's son. For a while, Christian comes off as somewhat one-note, but he is developed in this, and it does make sense that he would try to bury those emotions in that situation. The little brother is really quite spot on. I don't personally have any younger siblings, but we all know a younger family member like that. And even that little kid was really a pretty good actor. And that brings me to the humor. It almost always works. And other than maybe once or twice, it really doesn't detract from the serious and important subject. The music is very fitting and it doesn't distract. It doesn't feel 
manipulating, it enhances. There is the occasional cliché and the overall moral of the story won't surprise anyone, but it's still very well done and quite gripping. I was never bored during this. I don't personally think that the nature of photography, pleasant and well shot though it was, really added anything, at least not the Danish nature. I do think the African plains really added to the atmosphere. In every scene that takes place in Africa in this, you really feel like you're down there. You can practically feel the sand blowing in your face. Kim Bobnia is pretty typecast in this, he, but he does it well. The dialogue is great. It really feels very natural. It is very sad and dramatic and without resorting to any cheap tricks. Everything is set up and almost all of it pays off. Nothing comes out of the blue and there's nothing that's thrown in just to try to provoke us into feeling something. It's all built up, established, developed. This does a good job of going into what causes revenge and whether or not it works, although I do think it is a little bit inconsistent in two or three of the cases. Now for all of you who doesn't speak Danish, yes this is in Danish, but I would say if you can watch it with subtitles you should be just fine, and it certainly is a universal topic. I would definitely say to go see it if you're at all interested in the subject, and or if you're a fan of anyone involved. That was my spoiler for review of Hilton slash Civilization. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.